Well, hello and welcome to Winning Wednesday Bible Study. I am Apostle Daryl Johnson. So glad to be with you again on tonight. Listen, I don't want to belabor the time. I'm going to get right into the word. Uh, we're going to be talking about patience on tonight. Uh, our subject for tonight is patience. Uh, patience is the ability to wait. Ask yourself, or if you'll be honest, do you have the ability to wait? Do you have the ability to wait? I believe, you know, I've been talking about this for the last several weeks. I've been talking about waiting in prayer. But patience is right in the, uh, the same uh, line as that. Do you have the ability to wait? Because we don't want to wait for anything. We don't want to wait at the red light. We don't want to wait uh, in the line at the store. We don't want to wait at the doctor's office. We just don't want to wait. And when you think about the area of prayer, we really don't want to wait. So prayer is the ability to wait or to continue doing something despite difficulties. Can you continue even while dealing with difficulties? Most people back away. Most people shrink away when difficulty is involved. And so when you consider the area of prayer, if what we're praying for doesn't happen overnight and we go into extended periods of time of prayer and it's a difficult situation that we're praying about, most of the time, because of the difficulty, we begin to doubt God. We begin to murmur and complain. We, we begin to our our thoughts are just not what they should be, even though. I'm saved, even though I'm sanctified, I'm born again, I speak in tongues, I dance like David. When we deal with periods of extended time in prayer, we just don't fare too well. And as God told me, most of us, we give up too soon, far too soon. And what we're praying for, it's not going to change. If, if I walk away, if I give up, God told me it's not going to change the fact that he's God. The, the thing that changes, I don't get to see God come through because I lack patience. Do you have the ability to stick in there even while dealing with difficulties? Well, I can tell you in the season that we're in, you're going to have to have some patience. You're going to have to have some endurance. Because everything that you're desiring from God, it's not going to happen overnight. Listen, in the Bible, there were some people that were healed instantly. But then there were a group of lepers that were told that they would be healed as they went. Most of us, that's our prayer life. We're going to have to pray while continuing. Do you have the ability to pray, deal with difficulties, and continue? Can you continue to smile? Can you continue to be happy? Can you continue and not be indifferent? Can you continue and not throw temper tantrums? Can you continue and, 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 and still be pleasant with those that love you? Because a lot of times we become, we become difficult with those that, that love us and, and, and those that, that are supporting us. We become indifferent with them. But can you continue even while dealing with difficulty or to suffer without complaining or to become annoyed? Can you, can you suffer without complaining? Because most of us, we can't. We want everybody to know when we're going through, how we're going through, how we're feeling, what's going on. Can you do it, with, can you do it without complaining? It's time to grow up. It's time to stop throwing temper tantrums. Listen, there's a portion of scripture that lets us know that, that Israel had to spend 40 more years because a day, a year for every day that they complain. Could it be that your, your situation is being held up because of your murmuring and your complaining? It, do you have the ability to stop murmuring and complaining and throwing temper tantrums about your situation. And most of us, the situation that we're dealing with, it's repeat 
because we haven't shown the ability to pass the test properly. So God has to allow us to keep going through the same thing over and over again, maybe a new flavor, maybe a different time of the year, but it's the same test. Do you have the ability to graduate? Can God graduate you to something else? You know what? I don't want to be dealing with the same thing next year at this time that I'm dealing with now. If, it's, if, if, if I want to have something to deal with, and Lord knows we, we're all going to have something to deal with, I don't want it to be the same thing. Glory to God. Let's get let's get into the word. Colossians 3 and 12. Colossians 3 and 12. It says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering. Uh, that word long suffering, we're going to uh, look at it because there's other translations that says patience right there. So it says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, as the elect of God. The command is that I put on patience. That we're not supposed to miss that. As the elect of God, as God's chosen, as his man of God, I am supposed to put on patience. I'm supposed to wear patience as readily as I'm wearing this shirt. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And as readily as you can see my shirt, you you should readily be able to see patience exuding from my life. Glory to God. It says, put on therefore as the elect, as the elect should be different, as my behavior should be different. As the elect, I, I my life should show a definite difference. So it says, put on as the elect. And as the elect, one of those graces should be that I have patience. Look at what it says. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. Not just one, not just a little, not just two or three. Bowels of mercies, plural, mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and patience. Well, if this says that I ought to put on bowels of mercy, then I ought to put on bowels of patience. You know, patience, lots of patience, bunches of patience, a whole lot of patience. <laughs> Glory to God. You know, patience in every situation, patience in every uh, circumstance, patience that lasts. Not just patience for certain situations, but patience in all situations, all situations. You know, we, we never see Jesus in the scripture choosing a situation where he, he wanted to be patient or a situation where he did not show patience. We have to be consistent. And I know you might say, well, you know what, apostle, pastor, you know, that just may not be be a uh, 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 reality. It is reality. The thing is, is whether or not you're going to allow what you're supposed to be wearing to show up in every situation and circumstance. I'll be the first one to testify. I haven't always done that. Because if the situation felt right, and I'm, I'm talking about a little while ago, not not today. If the situation felt right and and I felt like I needed to get somebody told, oh man, put patience to the side, put salvation to the side, get the situation handled, repent. You understand what I'm saying? But listen, let me tell you something. When you really mean holiness, when you really mean holiness, you can't just put things to the side because I can tell you several situations where God told me I had to go back and apologize. And you know what? The last situation God told me, he said, I know that you're not going to want to keep going apologizing. So you're going to stop just because no one's around. No one can see you, you're going to stop. And I said, you know what, God? I said, you're right. I don't want to keep apologizing. 
because it's sometimes it's humiliating. Uh, it don't always feel good. I said, you're exactly right. So God, through situation and circumstances, he'll, he'll help you have some patience. He'll teach you how to be patient. Go read it, God. Because you're not going to always want to go back and apologize. And just because you get up on what we call the wrong side of the bed doesn't make it right for you to go to work and chop everybody's head off or get everybody told. We're supposed to put on as the elect and as the elect, my walk, my talk, my behavior, my personality is going to be different. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's get some more scripture on here. Hallelujah. And I pray that you're getting something out of this on tonight. Romans 12, Romans 12 and 12. It says, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Uh, from the ESV, it says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Again, most of the time, we can't be patient in tribulation. And because of that, we're definitely not going to be constant in prayer. I'm finding out more and more that we cannot allow situations and circumstances to dictate to us if and when and how we're going to pray. What's in me has to override what I'm dealing with externally. No, we don't, we don't feel like praying all the time. No, my situation doesn't look good or feel good all the time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the deposit that God has put down on the inside, my Shanda Bakosha, the, 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 the glory that he's put down on the inside has to outweigh what I'm dealing with, glory. It, it has to outweigh what I'm feeling. It has to outweigh my being discouraged, hallelujah. It has to outweigh my not wanting to pray. It has to outweigh my not wanting to get in the word. When I think about how good God has been, glory to God. Something ought to rise up on the inside of me, and I ought to find myself in a place of prayer. Now, I'm not going to tell you you have to be down on your knees because I'm not always down on my knees. But in my heart, in my mind, I, I, I sit on the side of the bed sometimes. And, and, and even those times when I don't have anything to say, saying, God, here, glory. I don't have anything to say, but what do you have to say? Glory to God. He didn't place the treasure inside me that he placed for uh, my being discouraged to override that. God is trying to process us. We're kicking and screaming. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're kicking and screaming. And we ain't doing nothing but costing ourselves more time in the situation, more time in the circumstance, more time going round and around, dealing with the same old thing. When God is saying, I'm tired of changing the same old dirty diaper, God is saying, I'm tired of putting a bottle in your mouth. I'm tired on the fire. It's time to be holy. In, in season, out of season, when dealing with difficulty and when all the bills are paid. God is trying to grow us up. Glory to God. And some of us, we have titles of apostles. We have titles of bishops and we can't endure. Uh, we, we don't pray. We're not praying like we're supposed to pray because we're fainting. We're giving up. We're, we're laying in the bed with the covers up over our head. And, and, and you, you're supposed to be praying. If no one is praying, Bishop, no one else, you are 
how to be praying. God is trying to grow us up. And especially in the area of leadership. And I know I'm not going to make many friends saying that. But God is trying to grow us up. What good is it for me to have the apostle, the apostle in front of my name and I can't endure for a week? Glory to God. I'm fainting and I'm laying in the bed. I'm not reading the word. I don't want to take a phone call because my situation isn't right. Well, the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. There is weight that comes along with the position. I said it last week. There's weight, W-E-I-G-H-T, and there's weight, W-A-I-T, that comes along with the title of apostle, bishop, evangelist, uh, teacher. There's weight that comes along with the position. It's not just about the glory. Hallelujah. Now, that's extra. That's extra. Hallelujah. Learning to be patient during times of trouble and in prayer one of the greatest that you want to do. To grow up. We have to grow up. There should be some consistency in our lives. And I'm talking just in general. I'm not talking to leadership now. But there should be some consistency in all of our lives to where, I'm, I'm sorry, if, 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 if we're called upon, the Bible says we're supposed to be, a, be ready and, and, and able to give an answer for the hope that lies in us. I'm trying to turn it off. Many of us, you know, we, we know scripture. We know scripture. We have it memorized. But because we're going through a difficult time, we don't even want to pick up our phone. What, you know, what about what that person is going through? Sometimes we're, we're, we're the only hope that, that something will happen. We're supposed their answer. Glory to God. You're going to have to, we have to allow God to be God in our lives. To allow, we have to allow God to be God in our situations, our circumstance, and especially when we're being stretched. Especially when we're being stretched. God, God has an ex. Any one of us to be Superman or Superwoman. But he's given us tools to call upon. And prayer is one of those tools. Prayer isn't, prayer should not be something that's dictated to by your situation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I tell you something else. We, we, we as saints, um, my, 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 my mother, my mother-in-law, my dad, my dad passed about a year ago, and I was having some conversations with my mother-in-law. I mean, my, she's my, she's my mom. She, she helped. It's okay to be sad. Her and dad were with each other over 50 years. It's okay to be sad. Just don't stay there. And I think giving someone permission to grieve, I think I, I think I surprised her. But no one, no one said that you have to be a superman or a superwoman. Grieve. Go ahead and grieve. Just don't stay there. And I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a counselor or anything, but I'm, I'm saying it's OK. It's OK if you want to be sad. You have days of sad. Just don't stay there. Now, that's extra. Let me go ahead and give you this. Give you this next scripture. 
uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, Hebrews 11 and verse uh, 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, but he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them uh, that diligently seek him. But with faith it is impossible to please him. Uh, it says that uh, with faith, faith, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Um, I want you to recognize and to understand that faith, faith has to be patient. Faith has to be patient. We're not, we're not, uh, hmm, we're not pleasing God as we should due to our being impatient. Let me, I'm going to say that again. We are not pleasing God as we should because we're not being patient. The Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. Faith is patient. Faith has to be patient. Faith is understanding. Faith is And we're not good simply because we are not patient as we should be. We're not patient. We're not patient with ourselves. We're not patient with others. And if we're honest on tonight, we're not patient with God because we feel like he ought to do what we want just like we want it when we want it. But faith is patient. Faith is, I really want you to hear me on tonight. Faith is patient. Faith is patient. When, when are you going to allow God to do what he needs to do in you so that you will learn how to exemplify the fruit, the evidence of patience? We have to we have to be patient. I know I know every, everybody wants everything overnight. We want to be healed overnight. We want the money overnight. We want everything overnight. But some things, some things are worth waiting for. Some things are worth some things are worth working for. Some things are worth uh, in making the investment in, working towards it having the goal, doing things incrementally to get there. And then when you get it, man, it's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. There are, there are no shortcuts when it comes to the thing, things of the spirit. There are no shortcuts. So you're either going to have to learn to be patient or you're going to always be disgruntled. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts in prayer. There are no shortcuts in uh, the anointing. You know, I can't go to Walmart and buy a two pack of anointing. I can't. I can't go to Walmart and buy a two pack of prophecy. You have to. You have to uh, pay for those things. Time in the Word. Time in prayer. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. Uh, Psalm thirty-seven. Uh, verse 7, it reads, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Rest in the Lord. Now, I like this scripture because twice, twice it says to fret not. Fret means to become vexed or worried. Don't allow what you're dealing with, what you're going through in prayer, just because it's gone into an extended period of time to cause you to become vexed or worried. What, what does it look like? I'm praying, and, and most times even while I'm praying, I'm worried about the situation. If it's going to be worked out, how it's going to be worked out, when, when is God going to work it out? Now, faith faith and worry they can't coexist either i'm going to do as as uh mark mark 11 24 says when i pray i'm going to believe or i'm going to be i'm going to be vexed 
and, and, and worried and upset. Fret also means to wear away. Don't allow, don't allow what you're dealing with, the fact that you're having to wait, to cause your prayer life to wear away, to cause your faith to wear away, to cause your hope to wear away. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Verse, verse 9, I like verse 9. Uh, uh, it says, uh, but for those that wait upon the Lord, it said they shall inherit their, if I, if I can wait, if I can be patient, God has an inheritance for me. If I can wait, if I can be patient, if I can wait the right way, the proper way, God has an inheritance for me. But see, this is what we don't understand. While we're murmuring and complaining and throwing temper tantrums, we're holding up the inheritance. We are holding up the inheritance that God has for every one of us. Why? Because we can't stop murmuring. We can't stop complaining. We can't stop talking about it. We can't stop rehearsing it. And God is saying, if you will stop doing those things, I have an inheritance for you. And let me give you another scripture. First Timothy. First mm -hmm. Timothy. 116. 1 Timothy 1, 1 Timothy 1 it says, but I received mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost, and this is from the ESV, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. That scripture is saying that I can be patient because of his patience. I, God, God wants to show himself off through me by my having patience. Everybody know you're going through something. Everybody know you're dealing with something. But man, what a, what a testimony for everybody to know that there's things going on in your life, but you're being patient. You're still showing up. You're still smiling. You're still exuding the joy of the Lord. You're still showing up for Bible study. You're still showing up uh, for, for, for worship service. You're not staying at home. You're still showing up. God wants to show himself off through you in the fact that when difficulties are, are abounding, you still show up. Glory to God. How many is that your testimony? Or is it that you stay at home when things get too rough, money gets short, people are acting funny? What do you decide to do? Do you decide to continue to show up? Or do you decide to cut, start cutting folks off? Do you, do you decide to, you know, stop answering the phone? The pastor's calling you. Other people from the church is calling you. But you don't, you don't feel it necessary to answer the phone? But you're the one that's quick to say, nobody calls me. Nobody cares. Oh, man, as I said earlier, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Just because you get angry and stay at home, you, you it's your soul that's in jeopardy. It's not the pastor or the parishioners. Because if God was to crack the sky and, 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 and you're not where you're supposed to be, who, who it's, it's, it's not the pastor's fault. It's not the parishioners' fault. You decided to cut everybody out. You decided to get in your feelings. Come on, man. It's, it's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. As the elect of God, we are to put on patience. As the elect of God, our patience should be readily seen as the clothes we wear. It should be readily identifiable as the clothes we wear, and especially when we're dealing with difficult times. My patience should be able to be seen in the way that I talk when dealing with, with, with a, 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 a difficult situation, in my behavior. And you know what? Even in my facial expressions. Yeah, even in your facial expressions. 
don't 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 throw off don't throw off on folks with 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 your facial expression. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't let somebody don't let other people know that you're not happy with somebody because of your your facial expressions. Even your even your facial expressions need to be sanctified. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Now that's worth that's worth paying for right there. 1999. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let me give you another scripture so we can move on here. Glory to God. Psalms, Psalms 40 and 1. Glory to God. And you might and you might say, you might say, uh, Apostle, you, you're really talking about teaching about somebody's facial expressions. Yes, because you know what? Back when the back when the uh, the the year first came in, we were on a 21 day fast and God told me, he said, don't allow your character flaws to cause you to miss out on what I have for you. You know, you know, character flaws, you know, those things that we pass over, you know, those things that we just say, oh, that's just Daryl. You know, those those things that we gloss over those things, those things. Don't allow those things to cause you to miss out. God is God is calling for the whole of our lives to be sanctified. He's calling for the whole of our lives to come up under the banner of holiness, not just a part. Not just the pieces that are convenient, but the whole of my life, the whole of my mind, the whole of my heart, all of me has to be on the altar. All of my life has to be on the altar. And again, it's not just those parts that are convenient, the whole of my life. When God asked for an offering in, in the Old Testament, it was a whole offering. It was not just a piece. It was a whole offering. My life is a whole offering to God. <clears throat> not just those pieces that are convenient. But that's what most of us do. We give God the pieces that are convenient. But God is after the whole, whole of your life. Glory to God, all of your mind, all of your heart, hallelujah, all of you, all the good and the bad. You know, seemingly we want to give God the best parts of who we are. He wants the, the worst of you, your pain, your sadness, your disappointments. He wants all of you. All of that has to be on the altar. Glory to God. I hope you're hearing me on tonight. All, all of me has to be on the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalms 40 and 1. Psalms 40 and 1. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. Now the original, it says, I waited and I waited. Glory to God. Most of us are not going to get to just the waited. I waited. But the original says, I waited and I waited patiently. Glory to God. Most of us, we wait and we wait, but it's definitely not patiently. But the Bible says, I waited and I waited. God wants to see how long we're willing to wait. He's not punishing us. He's not trying to destroy our lives. But if my life is going to look like his life, I'm going to have to learn how to wait. Let me say that again. If my life is going to look like his life, I'm going to have to learn how to wait. And the Bible says, I waited and I waited. Then he inclined. Then he leaned in to hear me. Then he leaned in with preferential treatment. Then he leaned in to show me how much he cared. He cares. But I got to learn how to wait. You know, you know, the fact that we can't wait is indicative of a, a and I know, I know you might be turned off on this. The fact that we can't wait is indicative of a bastard, of a bastard's mentality. Let me say it again. 
The fact that we cannot wait, that we're unwilling to wait, it's indicative of a bastard's mentality. We got to grow up. Now, I probably can just press in the broadcast right there. Well, in 2 Samuel 5, David had to wait seven and a half years, even though he was the king, to reign over a, a united Israel because Saul, Saul was still alive. Saul was still king, but David had been anointed king. Seven and a half years he had to wait to reign over a united Israel. I'm king. I have power. I have authority, but I have to wait. I'm the elect of God. I have power. I have authority, but I have to wait. Glory to God. Are you willing to wait? Are you willing to wait? Yes, I know you're anointed. I know you speak in tongues. I know you prophesy. But you're still going to have to wait. Nothing good happens without your being willing to wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While David was waiting, there, there, were, there were wars to be fought. There were enemies to be dealt with. David was betrayed several times. What are you doing while you're waiting? What are you doing while you're waiting? Waiting and patience has benefits. Waiting and patience has benefits. And Luke, let me, let me take you over to Luke, and I'm, and I'm, I'm finishing. In Luke, uh, the 15th chapter. Luke, the 15th chapter, and the 11th verse, it's, it's the story of the prodigal son. You know the story how the younger one demanded all of his, his substance to be given to him. Um, and, you know, he went away and, and, and uh, spent it. The Bible describes it as riotously. Um, I like in verse 15, it says, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to the sent him to the fields to feed swine. He goes from the father's house, the father's protection, the father's provision, the father's love to feeding swine. Look at look at the contrast. I'm 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 in the father's house. I got relationship. I should have patience. He loses patience. And end up end up feeding swine. Man, the flip side of not having patience, it doesn't look real good. Because we all want what we want when we want it. He said, He said, Father, give me what's mine. And we're all in God's face saying, Give me what's mine. Could it be that everything that you want will lead you away from God? If he gives it to you, he got what he wanted, but he ended up with the swine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It says that he would have fain, verse 16, have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him. So here he is outside of the father's house. Now he's having to decide, am I going to eat what was meant? For the swine, the flip side of patience, it's not pretty. And he had no man to give unto him. See, God will, God will, God will fix it where no one will help you. So this thing called patience, we're, we're either going to do it kicking and screaming, or we can do it willingly. I can We, we can do it inside the Father's house. With relationship, because the flip side, it doesn't look too good. Glory to God. Bible says, verse 17, it says, and when he came to himself, thank God that he finally came to himself. It says, he said, how many high servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? 
and I'm perishing with hunger. Everybody that's inside the Father's house, everybody that's connected with the Father, they have plenty. Because they're not just demanding that they get what they get and get it now. Even with relationship, you still have to wait. Verse, verse 18 says, I will arise and go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of the hired servants. It says, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and God sees us a far way off. He sees what we can be. He sees our potential. I, I know I know you wallowing around in the mud right now. I know you, you know, you can't hardly make it a week without fall. I know you can't make it hardly make it a week. But God sees us afar off. He sees what we can be. He sees what the investment that he's made in us, what it can turn into. He sees what his ROI can be. You know, his return on investment. He sees what it can be. It says, and he uh, had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The father ran to him, fell on his neck. And kissed him. You know the story. The father commanded that they uh, prepare the fatted calf. They had a celebration for him. His brother heard that he came back. He was upset. So not so not everyone's going to be uh, okay and, and uh, uh, happy about your getting it together. Your being patient. You're making your way back to God. You're learning how to settle down in prayer. You're learning how to rest in God. You're learning how to depend on God without murmuring and complaining, without threatening God that you're going to quit. You know how many, do you know how many times I threatened God to quit only to show back up the next Wednesday, only to show back up the next Sunday? What what I can be honest with you in saying is when I went through my difficult time in prayer, God, God grew me up in ways that I didn't even realize I needed to be grown up in. And if you would be honest with yourself, this process that God has taken you through, it's not that he isn't willing, ready and able. There's some processing that needs to be done with your life pastor, evangelist, teacher, there's some processing that needs to be done. Why would he give us the kingdom <clears throat> and I'm immature? Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I'm sure I haven't made many friends on tonight. Let me give you one more scripture and I'm going to get out of your way. Galatians 5.22 Galatians 5, 22, it says, uh, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Fruit is evidence. Does your life have evidence of change? Does your life show evidence of change? I'm talking about hard, concrete, and uh, 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 I'm talking about evidence that can't be uh, blurred. I'm talking about uh, serious evidence of change. Does your life show that something actually happened? Because when you say I'm saved, you're saying something happened. You're saying I have God down on the inside of me. And if I have God down on the inside of me, whatever my life looked like before, it should not look like that after I'm saying that God is on the inside. The Bible says that old things have passed away. All things have become new. 
what your life looked like before. It should not look like that now. Does your life have evidence of change? Glory to God, because that's what fruit is. We're not talking about you walking around with apples and oranges and strawberries hanging off of you. But we're talking about evidence of change, hard evidence of change. And the only way, only way, the only, listen, you can manufacture change on your own for, you know, a limited amount of time. You know, I can, I, I know how to, in my own strength, I, I know how to be kind and, you know, smile and say good morning. Let the right situation and circumstance hit my life. All of that goes out the window. But there's times that e even here recently, while dealing with difficulty, the Holy Ghost, mm, glory, the Holy Ghost overrides what I'm feeling. It overrides my not wanting to. It overrides my not wanting to be pleasant. Glory. Mm. There comes a time when you just really have to let God be God. Glory to God. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm.